Everyone, if you would please welcome Craig in talking about uh, the Tacker Project NFT. Thanks, David. So, um, look, today um, well, we've had a really good sort of introduction um, lead in, and really what I'm trying to uh, talk to you about today is, you know, as we virtualize these functions, so I talked to you a little bit about as we take functions out of those boxes and put them into the cloud, as we virtualize them, the thing that's important is how are we going to take advantage of that, right? I had someone earlier today, a reporter asked me today about NFE. How are we actually going to make NFE useful for us? So if you think about just taking a virtual function and putting it in a VM, it hasn't really achieved that much, right? It doesn't really allow us to do that much. So what I'm going to talk to you today about is, let's see if I can do this, uh, is things like... Um, Mano, right? If any of you that have heard of Etsy NFE Mano, raise your hands. Yep, there's a few out there. So how do we actually manage, automate, orchestrate, right? How do we actually make use of this virtualization so that we can have, say, for example, a, uh, a single programmable interface into our network and be able to stand up services pretty much automatically? But the other side of that, too, is that We've heard a lot about CI and CICD today and automation. How do I take advantage of that, right? So how do I, for example, take my changes and push them through an automated suite? So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I will talk a little bit about SDN and how SDN and NFE um, come together. Um, so I've got a one, I think, one slide on that. Um, it's not really an SDN you know, talk, so... Um, and I've only got 20, 20 minutes. <laughs> So anyone that's interested in that, I can go into a lot more detail um, but, you know, af afterwards. And then lastly here, um, we'll talk a little bit about TOSC NFE. Um, don't know how many people... Actually, I'll do another show of hand. TOSC NFE, anybody? Oh, John, you know, you're cheating. Oh, there's one other person, so that's good. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about, about that. That's basically a dynamic language for defining and modelling services and allows your orchestrator to be able to um, orchestrate that and push them out into the network. Um, and then uh, we'll talk about Tacker. So OpenStack Tacker is actually a, uh, an OpenStack project, and it's a VNF manager. So in a minute, we'll talk through the um, Etsy Mano stack, and you'll see what a, a VNF manager is. So um, right here, you can see, I mean, this diagram is a pretty standard Etsy Mano diagram for, for those of you that go to the Etsy site and do a little bit of research on this. You'll see this diagram over and over and over again. Um, I guess the important parts of the diagram is here, you know, this is probably your, I mean, OpenStack is here, your, all your infrastructure, storage, compute, networking is there. Um, and then on top of that, you would have your virtualized networking functions, okay? So if I get a load balancer or a firewall or a vRouter, um, they're going to be running here. But, you know, them's just, those uh, VNFs just sitting by themselves, even with OpenStack, being able to bring them up and down. Still, you need something to tell it, to tell OpenStack to do that, right? So OpenStack obviously provides that API that, that allows you to automate that. But generally speaking, you're going to have to have these other components to be able to actually uh, automate that process. So we'll just flick through some of those. Starting at the top here, the NFVO. So that orchestration piece, um, if you can imagine... And we'll talk about this when we get to Tosca, we'll talk about the actual modelling. But if you can imagine that you want to set up a new service, maybe you're a, you're a telco or a large enterprise and you want to set up a, a new product or a new service that is um, a couple of point-to-point -point links, uh, some firewalls and load balancers, maybe some sort of small enterprise business product that you want to roll out to all your customers. Well, you know, the, the old way of doing that was to get a whole pile of people on hands-on keyboards, or maybe you've got a proprietary OSS system that can do that for you, and you roll that service out. And it may be shipping routers, and you may be shipping firewalls and load balancers. Step forward to virtualization. now, you know, your physical boxes are in the cloud, and you need to automate um, and orchestrate that series of events. So... Basically, NFEO is kind of like the top layer into your network service. And we actually normally have uh, an arrow pointing in here that we call a service API. Because from that API, I can actually just push 
some commands. I can use you know, my, my um, upper layer stack. It could be a portal. It could be an automated script. I can push that into my NSO, into my um, service orchestrator. And, uh, and he will actually then orchestrate those components. Part of those could be NF, you know, VNFs. Part of those could be SDN. And we'll talk a little bit about how SDN plays into this. So, um, so as you move through this, you can see here, template, um, you really want to be able to do this in a templatized way. And so I talked a little bit about products. Well, most um, telcos and you know, large enterprises think and, and offer things in products and cookie cutter them because they have many, many, many customers out there. And while you might customize them a little bit, you try and, you know, as much as possible, try and uh, have standard products. So we templatize those products. And you'll see uh, in a little bit how we talk about using TOSC NFE to do that templatization. Um, you'll see also, if you think about it, um, uh, you're going to have to have some way of connecting all these VNFs together. So that's what we call a forwarding graph. Right? So a forwarding graph is you know, maybe I've got two endpoints in my cloud, in my network, and I need to get the data from one to the other, but I'm going to forward it through a load balancer and then I'm going to go to a firewall. But hey, well, if it's a web traffic, I want to go to a web server. So that forwarding graph, in its very simple state, may be serial, but it could actually have you know, a tree, basically, that depends on the type of data. And so NFEO has to kind of know about that. And you'll see later when we talk about Tosca NFE, how you build that tree. Like, we need to know we're going to build this component first, that component second. I mean, if I, if you're thinking about the different components of the, the of, a, of a product, probably I'm going to build the network first. There might be some point-to-point -point circuits across my SD WAN. I might need to build the um, the networking components inside the data center first, and then I tell OpenStack, "Hey, go and spin up the VM." Once I've spun up the VM, I wait for that to come up. I go and configure it. Right. So once that's happened, and only then, I might then run a test. Okay, the test works. Now I'm actually going to cut you know, traffic over to it. Right? So there's this set of events that need to happen. Um, and you, that's, you know, that's basically orchestration. And the other thing um, that's important here is the ability to support multi-VIM, and it's even potentially multi-types of VIM. You know, as you've probably heard, these days um, people aren't just looking at one cloud, they're looking at hybrid clouds. So you might use OpenStack locally, and you might use some sort of public cloud and, and link the two. So having an orchestrator that can kind of go across that and be able to implement services across those different clouds is another important thing. So, um, you know, so that's NFEO. If we go down the stack, we then talk about a, a VNF manager. And this, this is where sometimes it gets a little confusing. People are kind of like, well, why have I got a separate component? Couldn't I do that up at the orchestrator? Well, you could, but VNF management does a, um, a specific task. And what we're always trying to do when we're building architectures and mod, you know, in a modular way, and this is for those of you that are from the software world, which I'm guessing there's probably quite a few of you, you're always looking at how do I abstract, how do I modularize. Um, you know, VNF Manager is able to take care of the VNF management tasks without having to worry, worry the orchestrator. So the orchestrator gives an intent, and you've probably heard of intent-based APIs. You know, what we're trying to do is provide intent-based APIs. So the VNF manager is basically told, hey, I want a VNF, I want it in Sydney, and I need, I don't know, four vCPUs, I need four gig of memory, X amount of disk, disk space, um, and by the way, I want you to run a load balancer on it. The VNF manager is then tasked with go off and actually do that, right? So he will actually go down, talk to the VIM. You know, in our, you know, today, I guess we're talking about OpenStack, so that VIM is OpenStack. He'll use the normal OpenStack APIs to go and spin up the, the virtual, um, virtual machine or container. Once that's up, he'll know that the VM is up. He'll then go and talk to the VNF image, and he may configure it. Once that's running, that's not the end of his task. He also does health checking. So he'll health check the VNF. If there's some failure, you'll have a policy there on to what to do when that failure happens. Or it may not actually be a failure. It may be a certain performance 
um, figure that it, re it reaches. So it hits a threshold, you actually auto scale up, or it dies, you auto heal. So you need to, you know, the VNF manager is, is basically in charge of all these different uh, pieces of the puzzle. And then lastly, I won't spend much too much time on this end, but um, you know, this is pretty much the topic of the whole of today, is OpenStack. Uh, you know, but obviously you can have different VMs in there. So OpenStack is what we're talking about today. Um, it's exposing those northbound APIs so that my VNF manager doesn't need to know how do I actually spin up a VM. I don't really care. Right? I just tell OpenStack I want a VM, these are the parameters, and it goes and does it for me. So they're, they're, at a very high level, the three you know, uh, components of Mano. Now, I'm going to show you now an architecture that um, is starting to become very popular now. Um, I noticed the other day Verizon released their um, SDN NFE architecture. It was very similar to this. You've got the OpenO um, group, open, um, uh, the Open Mano group as well, and... Um, and then even at and uh, what is it called, e e Ecom, I think it is. Um, very similar where, I guess, you know, from a telco's perspective, they're always worried about um, their network. I mean, their SP network. They've got a, a network there that they need to traffic engineer. Um, we heard, you know, today we heard a lot about the data center side. And so, you know, I've got here, for example, an SDN controller. Well. In the data center, that may or may not be the case, and the little dotted line is optional, right? So you may have, from a data center perspective, an overlay network that's controlled directly from Neutron, ML2 drivers that go direct. You may decide, hey, I want to put an SDN controller or some controller in front of there that means that now I'm only using you know, one ML2 driver to drive multiple different devices. Perhaps I already have a multi-vendor network with an SDN controller in it. So there's a lot of different options here. Um, but generally speaking, when you get to like a wide area network where you have to actually, ha where you care about bandwidth, um, you know, in the data center, I've generally got an oversupply of bandwidth. When I go to the WAN, it's normally restricted. So at that point, now I'm really worried about traffic engineering. So therefore, I need to have, make sure that that network that I engineer is matching up with the resources I'm allocating on the NFV side. So, you know, the previous couple of slides I've talked through Mano NFVO here. You've got Tacker doing the VNF management. You've got OpenStack as the VIM. Um, and then this other side of the function here, you've got basically an SDN controller, which a function that normally sits on top of that is something that we call a, a WAN PCE. Um, we have a product name that, you know, called Flow Manager that fits in there. But basically, it's the brains of all these network nodes. In, in the traditional... Um, you know, routed network, a lot of that control plane would actually sit in the device. In a normal SDN network, what we're saying is we take that out and we put that in the controller. So that's actually, when we say in the controller, it's normally an app that sits on top of the controller. Okay. So uh, this, this basically is a, you know, an architecture that allows you to bring up those network services um, it has this single service API into your orchestrator. We use templates that we define in Tosca from the service orchestrator. So I actually define in those templates my products, be that a small enterprise layer 2 load balancing firewall product or you know, maybe just a layer 2 VPN product. But we define the services there. And then your portal would be actually using those templates to say, hey, I want a new... Um, load balancing firewall service, thanks. And here's the input parameters. I want the network to start over here on this device and finish over here on this device. And by the way, I want a load balancer to be in Melbourne. Or perhaps when I'm doing that circuit setup over the WAN, I want it to pass through certain waypoints. Right? So all of that stuff can be defined up here in the service template. How, you may ask. Well, <laughs> um, that's the next question. Um, so Tosk NFV, it was interesting that there was only a few hands of people that um, have heard about this. So if it's something you haven't heard of, go and research it. It's definitely going to be something that you're going to hear a lot more of in the future. All of the standard groups are pretty much moving towards a Tosk NFV 
type of environment. What it does is allows you to define those services. So when I talk about those products that you're going to def you know, define at the, the orchestrator layer, it allows you to define that modeling in a standard way. Tosca itself has been used to do application modeling for a long time now. Um, and only recently we've seen an NFV profile which will allow us to do it for NFV services. So you can see there the diagram on the right. The way Tosca works, it has a number of nodes. So here we've got these VNFs and basically these links between the VNFs are called virtual links and then on the end of the virtual links are connection points. So using this very simple terminology, um, we can actually define our VNFs, we can define the virtual links between them and then over the top of this we actually put a forwarding graph. So, it's, you know, it's, it's probably a two-hour conversation, but at a, <laughs> at a very high level. Uh, this allows us to basically define our services. And so for each of these, we can attach properties. You know, I'll attach a property for that VNF one. I'll call it a load balancer. I'll tell it how much CPU, how much memory, etc., where it's going to live. For these virtual links, I can say, well, I want a certain quas. I want it, you know, to be an ELAN or an E-line. Um, and then the connection points, I can tell it where I want the service to start and end. Okay. And I can do it, the important thing is I can do it in the standard way and that allows me to be able to, you know, basically build an architecture like this that I can evolve over time. So we're using standard products, you know, OpenStack, open sourced community product, open daylight, open sourced community SDN controller, OpenStack Tacker, open source product. Um, the orchestrator is getting there. We're using an open sourced product from uh, Cloudify. Um, but you can see, basically, you, you're leveraging open source, open community platforms and then tweaking them and putting integrations on top of them. So what's TACA? Um, TACA is basically, today, TACA is this VNF management. Um, and then, you know, we'll see how that reaches up into orchestration. But today, it'll do that VNF management really well. And we've actually, um, we do have it on the stand upstairs, although I know we're sort of running out of time, so if anyone wants to see it, we're, we're happy to, to either show you upstairs after this or um, you know, another day. But you can see, um, I mean, obviously, Brigade has been pushing this hard, but there's a lot of other companies coming on board now. Um, I think, not the last summer, but the one before in Japan, we had a, a one and a half hour session on um, Taken and it got a huge, um, a huge uh, attendance. So it's really starting to gain market uh, traction. Um, just quickly, if you look at uh, VNF management, I've sort of gone over a lot of these different areas around life cycling, but you can see the way TACA works. You've got this infrastructure driver, which will be talking to your VIM. In you know, today's term, that'll be talking to OpenStack. Um, if you had other um, infrastructure drivers there, you could talk to, say, Azure or AWS, so that you could have a hybrid cloud type of scenario. Um, and then they have these management and monitor drivers. The management driver, is to do the configuration. So after I've, if you imagine stepwise, after I've told OpenStack to start the, start the, um, the, the build the network and to start the <coughs> VM, my VNF image comes up, could be a load balancer, but I need to configure it. So the management driver can then configure it, and then the monitoring driver can do the health. And so you're able to extend these drivers, and in doing so, port and bring your own VNFs onto the platform. Okay. So that's, um, I guess that's VNF management, that's TACA at a very high level. Um, we're using it, as I said, as I said today, um, and in that, that uh, architecture that I showed you, we can do that complete end-to-end -end service where we actually just, um, using a, an API, we can actually call a service template, say we want to deploy it, it spins up the VNF, spins up the SD-WAN, connects all the, all the dots, if you like, connects the, the services, and we're able to get um, traffic flowing across that. We can kill the VNF, it's health monitoring it, it can restart the VNF, off you go. So, um, it is a new space, um, but we're, you know, we're basically there today. Um, these are the things that are coming. Um, actually, some of these are almost there. I know um, multi-site is almost there. So, multi today, if you want to deploy TACA, you have to have one per instance of OpenStack or per VIM. So if you have multiple OpenStack clouds around your WAN, 
you would put TACA in, in each one. Um, coming with multi-site, you will be able to have one and it'll do image control and push, push that out to all, all the different VMs. Um, there's another thing that's pretty important here is around the automatic resource com creation. Today in our demonstration, we're actually getting our orchestrator to do that creation with OpenStack directly. So we, for the data so any, anyway, we create those resources first and then we spin up the VNF. Um, and basically, Tacker will be able to do that itself. This dot here where you say we're doing forwarding graphs, uh, that's where we start to reach up and do some of the orchestration piece. So Tacker. Uh, we'll start to do orchestration there. Um, we've already integrated the Tosca NFV profiler, so you probably saw before, uh, there's a bunch of companies that already are using Tosca um, and projects. I mean, obviously, TAC is using it. Uh, the OpenStack Parse is using it. Uh, Cloudify is using it. And there's, all, and there's now a project called ARIA. If you haven't heard of it, look it up. It's on the slide, A-R-I-A. -I -I. There's a, um, a consortium that's actually um, focused on NFVO, basically. And in there, there's a standard Tosca parser, and we're now bringing that into uh, TACA. Um, and again, here, the NSD. So an NSD is a network service descriptor, and that, um, that basically will um, allow you to do that service templating. So again, that NFVO function. OK. So I think I've almost finished on time, <laughs> I'll leave you with these points to read yourself. Um, you know, I think it's, it's an interesting, I think we're at an interesting time. You know, as I said before, I'm a networking person that has now been freed from the constraints of my little box. You know, it's quite interesting as we start to virtualize and we think about all of the possibilities and I think, you know, for example, as we do, um, as we do these templates, you know, rolling them through a CI process, and rolling them through a testing environment, like what you were talking about before, right? Where uh, before I actually allow any change into my network, I actually push it through a complete CI process and then deploy it. Um, it it's, there's some really interesting um, times, I guess, ahead. So one other slide that I'll just leave you with, and that's these resources for TACA. Um, get involved. I encourage you to get involved. Read through it. It's an open stack, uh, open source um, project, so uh, more than happy to get your help. So thank you. Yes, round of applause. Craig, are you here for networking groups? Okay, so please come talk to Craig if you have questions about TACA or if you have general questions about how to get involved in an OpenStack project. Like I said, there is a bit of a learning curve. However, um, I'm sure Craig can uh, give you some ad advice, tips, and guidance. Other than that, the next place we're heading before drinks is if you could all head upstairs. We have the closing remarks panel. Um, if you could please progress up there rather quickly, because that'll be starting in about two and a half, three minutes.